Welcome everyone to Tying Tuesday. Brady back with you. Today we're gonna to tie a Prince of Darkness. This is a really cool, unique stonefly style, sort of a tractor pattern. Uh, it's a real heavy weighted fly, but it's got a nice soft tackle on it just for movement. So it's a great bug uh, to get you down really quick in fast turbulent water into those plunge pools where fish might be holding really deep. This one will get down fast uh, and, and it'll turn some heads. So the Prince of Darkness, uh, AKA the Ozzy Osbourne here. Starting out with an awesome hook from Foling Mill. If you're not aware as of yet, Foling Mill is a new product line to the Avid Max category. This is a great hook. It's the FM11 from them, tying on a size 10 today. And then also featuring some new tools. So we got the Schmeyen stuff in stock. Really excited about this. The Twister, which you'll see me use here in a minute. And then uh, both of the bobbins that they offer, this is their fully adjustable one. Really nice, really smooth product. The only thing I don't like about this is it takes a minute to change bobbins. Um, once you get them in there, it's one of the smoothest, most fluid bobbins I've ever used, but it does take a minute to load it. So you might wanna have a few of them at the ready if you like it. First thing we're gonna do, starting this off, we got a bead on there. This is the matte bead from Firehole, definitely oversized. This is a 4.5 millimeter. Uh, so real heavy. And then I'm gonna add to it as well with some of the hairline uh, 030 lead free wire today. So if you're not a big fan of using lead, you're environmentally conscious, the lead free is a good way to go. And we're just gonna throw down a few wraps, four or five here right on that hook shank. And then we'll push that up into the bead. Once it breaks off for me, there we go. So we'll slide that right up into that bead. One of the cool things about this hook is the offset to it from Foley Mill. It's just got a nice offset, which is good to kind of maximize that gape. You can get a lot of material on here and still have a nice wide hook gape for poking fish. The thread I'm using today is the 70 denier UTC. And we'll just get that rolling right behind those lead wraps, sort of build our transition as we typically do when we use some sort of added weight. And then we'll throw on our tails, which is the good old bias, the goose bias here in black. Just gonna grab a couple of those marry them together so that they're splayed away and tie that in as our tail. So I'm just making sure they're the same length. Measure out about the length that I want there. Sort of a nice stubby little tail on this guy. Some securing wraps. And then we can walk down on them and maneuver them so that they're nice and buggy. And then we can take our thread back up. We can use those biots to help transition even more so before clipping out the extra and getting our next material tied in, which is gonna be a little bit of ribbing. And I like the French tinsel for this. So this is the silver small gauge French tinsel. It's a nice material. It's a little bit thicker than just a regular wire. It's modeled a little bit. It's kind of a, it's a coated material. And I just like the sheen that you get from the French tinsel. So we'll tie that in and leave it hanging out right in the back. Continue our taper transition here. And then we're gonna use the Schmann tool. So this is a great uh, dubbing loop tool, which is what we're gonna use it for today. Just sort of a simple function of it. So like you typically would, close a nice little dub loop, walk our thread up and out of the way and then we can throw some material in there. 
So we're gonna go ahead and open up our loop, slide some material up towards the top, and then let it go, and it's captured in there. So now I can get more material ready. And what I've put in there is not gonna come out. You can really work on your dub loop taper nice and easy with that open close function on this man twister. I think it's a really well thought out design product. It can replace a few tools at your vise, whether that be your shepherd hook, your twister, your gator grips, sort of an all-in-one option that really works great. So for this fly, we're gonna make just a nice, tight dubbing loop here. So we'll go ahead and spin it up. It's got good weight to it, spins real nicely and helps make just a nice dubbing rope here. So we'll take that on forward, wrapping a nice buggy buggy body on this Prince of Darkness. Pretty thick overall pattern. One that is hard to resist, I'm sure. And we're gonna go right up behind the bead and then secure that in place there. And then we'll wrap our ribbing over top and we got a few more materials we'll add into the mix. Really cool tool, definitely worth it. So we'll rib out our fly, starting on the back all the way on forward, just some nice open, consistent wraps, adding durability right up to the bead. Everything else is gonna happen right behind the bead here. We can trim down a little bit of the stubbing. I like it buggy, but within reason. There we go. So the next thing we're gonna do is add in our soft tackle. And so I'm gonna build just a little bit of a thread base here for that partridge feather. And on this partridge, I want kind of a dun color. You could use a few different things for this. Um, I find these sort of neck feathers on the partridge work well for this. But if you had a hen back or something else in a dun color, that would work as well. So we'll find the right gauge feather that we need for this fly. Clean them up a little bit, get her ready for tying. Looks about right. I want it to go all the way back through the tail there. Just a nice full soft tackle. So we'll grab the tip of that feather and pull everything else rearward. Like so. And that gives us just a nice little tie-in point there. Then we can secure in the collar. And trim out that little bit of excess there. Tie it with it in there, not a big deal. And then we'll wrap that forward a couple times using my hackle pliers. So we'll pull all of those rearward and then lay them flat as we go around. And get one full twist here. 
And then we can capture that with our bobbin. About the extra stem. And then I like to work back on it just slightly to get everything to kind of tease rearward and also to lay a base for our next material, which is gonna be some turkey biot. Gotta have the white turkey biot for any sort of prints. Couldn't call it a prince without the white turkey biot. Could use goose, but I like a larger biot since I'm doing such a big fly. Pulling them off of the turkey gives you just a larger material to work with. It tends to pop a little bit more. So I'm gonna tie these in diagonally across the fly. And I like to do them almost the full length of the body. So we'll tie that first one in couple of wraps, just like so. And then do the same thing in the opposite direction, kind of marry them up, figure out your length, cross them over, couple of wraps, see where you're at. Looks good like so. Secure it, and then I always Pull them rearward and cut in front of them so you can trim them out nicely. And you could go ahead and whip finish right there. I like to add just a little more dubbing on the collar. Kind of gives a bit of a cleaner look. Covers up all of that white, those thread wraps that we've been laying down. Just a little bit of a finishing touch to this fly. And then we can come in with our whip finish and secure everything down. Again, just a, a cool nymph pattern, really an attractor pattern. By all means, you could fish it on the swing, but it's definitely gonna cater nicely, uh, being so heavily weighted as your, your uh, lead fly in uh, a multi-nymph rig where you really gotta get down fast, trail some smaller midges, emergers, pupas, whatever you got behind it. Uh, but this one will turn a lot of heads and definitely hook up into a lot of fish. Just a really cool take on the Prince, the Prince of Darkness.